Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's uh, your boy Chat here with another 8012 video, week four. This is a special week for all of us, first time since week one. We have all eight games. Round of applause for the Dota servers for not ruining our week and all the captains for remembering to ticket. Luckily, I still didn't have to ticket this week, so we lucked out. We got all eight games. We'll see as the season continues. If I don't have to ticket at all, that's best case scenario, so... Yeah, let's jump right in. The first series we got, Instigators vs. Prestige Worldwide. This is, of course, my series. Thank you, everyone, for waiting for the schedule. We played yesterday. So, jumping in, game one, Prestige went with a Train Protector, Offlane Viper, Carry Weaver, Mid, Magnus, and a Marana for position. Um, Instigators went with an Ember Spirit, a Luna, a Tidehunter, a Witch Doctor, and a Disruptor. So, I actually think both these drafts are pretty even. I really like Disruptor against Weaver. They picked it both games after I got Disruptor, so I wasn't really upset about that. I felt like the Tidehunter was so good against their lineup because you just crack and shell off literally everything except for maybe the Weaver stuff. Yeah, so I don't I don't really know. I, I, I think we had some pretty good picks. I think, again, I think this game could have gone either way based off the draft. Maybe I'll go Prestige Worldwide here. No particular reason. I think both these drafts are pretty even. Oh boy, I'm gonna miss it. Oh yeah, this is a really good play actually. We saw the Magnus on a ward split from the team, so we went in. I'm actually shocked um, this fight didn't just end there. Okay, we're gonna end with an RP on the Luna. Sick Ravage by Sam, holy smokes. Oh, good change on the Ember Spirit on the back line. Really good clean fight by the Inskaters there, I think. That was probably our best fight. Game number two, Prestige Worldwide went with a Weaver, a Shadow Friend, a Tide Hunter, a Witch Doctor, and a Tree and Protector. And the Inskaters went with a Slark, Chikiro, Sand Cane, Necrophos, and Disruptor. So I think both games, the support duos for both teams, lacked kind of any sort of initiation, which isn't, you know, terrible because I think the drafts rounded it out. I think Tidehunter is pretty bad against Disruptor just because you can't crack and chill off the silence. So if you get him in the ulti, you know, he can't ravage. I think the Slark's really good against the Tidehunter. Kiro, again, I think Disruptor's good against the Weaver. I think Jakiro's pretty good against um, their lineup. And I think the Necrophos is pretty good at bursting down all these heroes. So I'll go Instigators here. I thought this was a us favorite draft of the two. Again, I think both teams actually drafted pretty well. I think, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with Prestige Worldwide's draft. I just prefer ours here. Oh, what a nice pass. like literally the only fight this game it was just like tiny skirmishes but this was the only like 5v5 all game well there's two of prestige worldwide um i actually think definitely the first game probably should have gone our way but uh could have gone either way i mean this this game was crazy basically we just turtled for the whole game um pretty much the story of both games just us turtling and then game two, again, I, I kind of, look at this graph, I'm kind of shocked. I didn't really think they were that far ahead of us, but I guess they were. They didn't really feel like it, but it's probably because we just didn't have any fights, like, the whole game. It, as you guys can see, there was, like, no fights. There was not any team fights, really. Yeah, it was just kind of a weird, weird game. But, yeah, it was 2 -0. Shout out Icicle for rescheduling. It kind of worked out where... I guess the only day they could have their full team was Sunday, and that was the only day we could have our full t team. So when he reached out, I was like, heck yeah. So 
Shout out Icicle. Alrighty, the second series we got Illegal vs. Nameless. I was super excited for this series. I think this is the top two undefeated teams to this point. So I did get it spoiled. I think I have every series spoiled, so that's a bummer. But game one, Illegal went with an Ursa, an Axe, a Sniper, a Silencer, and a Hoodwink. I think that's fairly well rounded. Not too much to complain about there. Nameless, they went with a Marana, uh, Carry Pudge, a Venomancer, a Lone Druid, and a Lich. Okay. So, I think, yeah, this must be the team that really likes Lone Druid. I don't really know who I prefer. I think you're lacking initiation on Nameless, so maybe I'll go with um, Illegal here. I think both drafts are, are fairly solid. So, not not too big of a preference, but I just think uh, Illegal's draft is really, really well-rounded. Oh, they're gonna steal Roche, maybe? Oh, that was a good call. They don't have Vino all day. Oh, he still gets the Aegis on the Ursa. Okay, so the Pudge and the Axe are both down. The Lich, four staffs in for the Axe. Holy smokes. You absolute beast of a support player. I love that. Vino again? I don't know how he had that already. It must have been a minute. Huge ulti. The Ursa's going off. The Pudge is kind of going on the back line. Getting... Oh, there's a sick hook. It's such a split fight. The Pudges just killed everyone. The Ursus killed everyone. It's like, the, I think the two carries just going at it. At the enemy team. Oh, he blinked in? I thought he was going to blink out. Oh, man. Graves is in their base. The sniper and the hoodwink are defending. PKBTP? No, the bash. Oh. Fortunate good fight, has buyback. Game number two, illegal. They went with a Terror Blade. You don't see that a lot. A Zeus, a Death Prophet, a Silencer, and a Clockwork. Okay, so initially I think you're lacking a little bit of a uh, initiation. You just have the hook shot, really. Nameless, they went with a Marana, a Pudge, a Centaur, a Mid Phantom Lancer, and a Grimstruck. I don't really like that. I don't think Phantom Lancer is in a great spot right now. I, I, I don't know how the mid-matchup goes, Phantom Lancer versus Zeus. You know, I have not seen that too often. Then with the Carry Pudge again, I think it's pretty good right now, especially against Illusion Heroes, like the, the Terror Blade, if you can get on top of him, which you can with Centaur Ulti, so... I don't actually hate this draft. I think they're pretty solid, I just don't love the mid-PL, so... Maybe I'll, I'll lean Illegal's way again. I just, this mid-PL, mid, mid -PL I feel like probably could have been something better. I was going to say Tinker for the Terror Blade, but that EO sucks, so. I don't, I don't know. I don't have a recommendation here. It's a good hook. Uh, I think they good silence royalty there. I think they had better counters last game with the Ursa. The Centaur goes in, blinks on the Silencer, but it already uses ulti, so I'm not super upset. Terror Blade, uh, Metamorphosis, Disengage, and then a Zeus ulti. I think there's more to scout and to do damage just to make sure no one's wrapping on Marana. Uh-oh. Oh, he hits the Terror Blade, though. Um, good. Uh, this Crypt Shrill will be 6 under onto the real PL. I thought that was hype. Um, I definitely thought he was going to die, and then he somehow does it there. Good hook shot there, that trap and gold. And they kill off the tanky boys. That's so scary as a support player to be... Have their carry TP onto the creep right next to you. I'd be terrified if I was clockwork. All these buybacks, everyone's like, this is gonna decide the game pretty much. Yule Scepter seemed to be the name of the game against this Grimshire. They just keep Yules and off that silence. This Marana dives really deep here. I missed it again. Push shot onto the Centaur, who was one before him. Good Cogs push back there. Plus four for the silencer. That's it. You gotta disengage. I mean, I'm pretty certain. You know, we'll, we'll go through the rest of the series, but I'm like pretty positive that's gonna be series of the week. Not only was it 1-1, which usually I try to do 1-1s for series of the week, but these games were so close if you look at them. Like, this one probably in particular. Both sides doing a really good job. And then game two, I think was also really close. Um, way less kills, but it lasted over an hour, which means it's a good game. If it lasts over an hour, the teams can't really 
take uh, high ground, so it usually is one team just, you know, holding their own for as long as they can. So really good series, probably series of the week. You know, we'll see in about 15, 20 minutes whenever I get there, but really good job by both teams. I, top two teams in the league, so, I, you know, I'm excited to see. I'm sure they'll play again at some point this season. The third series, we got Diwali Truck Dumpster Five versus Five Guys, One Cup. Game one, DTD went with an IO, a Spirit Breaker Disruptor, a Faceless Void, and a Razor. It must be Offline Spirit Breaker. You got the Global Presence. I don't love IO with, with Faceless Void. I don't necessarily think it's bad, but plus IO with Razor, this guy will never die. 5G, they went with a Mars, Anti Mage, a Rico, a Mid Tusk, and a Train Protector. Let's see, I think this is pretty well rounded. Uh, you got a really good fighty lineup. You might lack damage a little bit inside the arena. You have a lot of control. Really, really good uh, team fight, AoE control. You just might lack damage. So uh, they're going to go split pu pushing route with AM. I think both these drafts are pretty even. Not really sure which one I like better. Maybe I'll go five guys here just because. I, I, again, I think maybe you lack damage, but I think Rico's really good in the patch. I think... Trains really good in the patch. I really like mid tusk, so I'll go five guys. Oh! In, dude. Oh, that was kind of a sick snowball. Nice. Man, see what I'm talking about? This control is insane. They can't even team fight. This Razor's by himself. These two are in. Razor's a madman, dude. Oh, the bash. Dude, how is this guy not dead? Oh! Oh my god, he disappeared. That was kind of sick. 1800 gold. He got barely kicked out of college. There he is being charged. Oh no! I don't even know what happened there. The tether broke. That was crazy. That was so unfortunate. Oh man. Wicked good fight by Five Guys. Game number two. DTD went with the IO Spirit Breaker disruptor the same three heroes and then they had a mars this time and a, a mid necro who had 25 kills holy smokes this guy is probably unkillable he had so much regen i would assume five guys went with a death prophet offlane a juggernaut an invoker a rubik and a train protector so a lot of people pick this jug against disruptor and again i'm not an expert at disruptor but i don't think it's that good like you can spin off glimpse, but once your spin's done, you don't want to buy BKB on Jug. And if you do, it's like you bought a BKB to counter their five position. So I don't love the matchup of Jug against Disruptor. I, I don't mind it whenever I'm playing Disruptor if they have a Jug. I'll probably go I'll probably go DTD here. Again, they still got that global presence with Spirit Breaker IO. They really like this combo. They've done it two games in a row. Um, you got really good burst damage with the Necrophos and the Spirit Breaker and uh, the vision of charge for a disruptor is really good. So I'll go DTD game two. Jump is caught up. I think he's going to be IO. Mars ulti right here. Back in my disruptor ulti. Oh man, this fight's so split. Oh, the jump out back. Uh, and there's an invoker. Oh, the Cataclysm just deleted the Mars. A cheese on the way. Oh, my cheese, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets ulted by the Geolog. Two split. Oh, boy. It's about the ages. So the eggs. Dude, is this a mid? Playing like he's playing mid. No defensive. Mm -hmm. Got the jug. Oh, sick glimpse on the invoker chip.
It was a really good series. Both games are super close. Uh, DT won on both. It was a 2-0, but as you can see, Five Guys had more kills game one. And game two, it was super back and forth. So really good series overall. It was a 2-0, but I think both teams played really well. Super excited to see that series. Um, I think I'm impressed by both teams. All right, in the fourth series, we got uh, Boneheads United versus Genesis. Boneheads went with an axe, Void Spirits, Earth Spirit, Lena, and Lich. Carry Lena, I assume. Yep. Uh, pretty well-rounded. I like this a lot. Um, maybe you have a weak offlane, but otherwise, I think it's pretty good. Genesis went with a Magnus, Tree Protector, a Quap, a Dry Ranger, and a Tusk. Okay. I don't love four Tusk right now. Offlane Magnus feels a little bit weird, but I think Drow's really good. Excited to see Quap. I don't think we see it a lot. I don't think it's bad. So I might go Boneheads United and maybe instead of... I, I probably would have done Earth Spirit safe lane with Delina and Lich with the, the Axe just to do that melee and ranged. But uh, I think it's pretty well-rounded. I think Jensen's draft's pretty good too, but I'll probably lean towards Boneheads. Oh, yeah, he had an cast. Oh, no. Double damage board spirit. Oh, that was good RP. Oh, that quad ulti was sick. The drow. Oh, man, this double damage board spirit is still alive. Holy smokes. He's got 40 health. I don't, I don't. I can't imagine he gets the rampage. No, he gets out. Damn. Oh boy. This is a support tusk, I think. Just going ham. Oh boy. Oh, got him. Nice. Game number two, uh, Boneheads went with a, a offlane Pudge, mid razor, a hoodwink, a drow, and a tree protector. And then Genesis followed up with offlane Dawnbreaker, five Undying, a Phantom Assassin, a Quap, and a Marana. I like Genesis draft here. I think it's really well rounded. You got the global presence of Dawnbreaker, um, so she can split push. You got the burstiness of the PA. You can save PA. I really like burst against Razor, for instance. Yeah, I, I think I'll probably lean Genesis's way. Oh, the arrow domes the drow. Love that. I go in. Tombstone down. Gotta kill that tombstone. They blow up the razor. This is looking good. The Quap gets away. Domes the tree with the arrow. It's a dead tree protector. Ooh, good with the gold field to the Marana. They're all so low on dire. Oh, man. The drow pops. PA's going crazy. Yeah, there's the crit. Dang, good fight. I, I don't know what it is this week. This is a this was the fourth series. It was a 2-0, and both games felt wicked close when I was looking at them. This game especially. I mean, you look at this, it wasn't until 35 minutes the game was decided. Um, this one may be a little bit more Boneheads favored, but look at all the team fights. I mean, it looks like... It, they just, like, if you watch the replay, I think... Boat has just barely escaped on like every single one with little health. So, Dota's a game of inches. Uh, really good series by two teams. I'd recommend any of the four we've seen so far to to watch. I think they're all they're all really good. So good job both teams. Fifth series we got Golf Tuesday versus Hobbit Hole. Golf Tuesday went with Jakiro, a Pango, uh, Silencer, Ember Spirit, and a Life Stealer. So you don't have a lot of tank here. You're kind of hoping that with the Life Stealer, but you know it's okay. Look at this weird glitch going on here. Hobbit Hole, they were with a Clockwork, a, uh, man, my Dota must not be loading. Um, Clockwork, Dawnbreaker, a Bat Rider, or Bane, <laughs> Bloodseeker, Enchantress. This video is so scuffed. Okay, I'm assuming it's a five position, Clockwork, offlane, Bane, I'm assuming it's a mid Enchantress. <laughs> you can't really tell. This damn Dota buff. Okay. I'll probably lean Golf Tuesday's way. Uh, I think the mid-enchantress is a little crazy. But uh, I think it's pretty pretty uh, mid-game favorite on Hot Hole. If you can hit your time at like 25 minutes, you'll just win. So um, not a bad draft. I just lean Golf Tuesday's way. It's crazy. I don't know if there's a harder counter in Dota. Uh, 
time there probably is. They blow up the Bane here. Uh, Dawnbreaker's coming in. Oh, a Bash and a Silence there. Stops that, and now Dawnbreaker's in trouble. Mega kill for the Lifestealer. Oh, they just blew up the Bloodseeker. A ruptured Earth uh, Ember Spirit's gonna go down, but they are going to kill them, and now... The Kissy Boy is the only one left. Oh, almost hook shots there. I saw that. I'm leaving that in. Game number two, they went with the Life Sealer again. They had a four position Tusk. Or maybe it was a three position Tusk. A five position Undying, four position Shakira, and mid Storm Spirit. I don't love the offline Tusk. Uh, and he's building like a carry. So, Hobbit Hole, they went with a mid Weaver. A Disrupto, Marana, Centaur, Naga. Super well-rounded. Don't love the mid-weaver. But it's good for jumping the back line and good for killing Tombstone, right? So you got the... the I don't know what his attack thing is called. I don't play these carry heroes, guys, all right? The ability that makes him attack twice is really good for killing Tombstone. And you just got a really well-rounded team. I, I really like... Uh, Obviously, Naga Disruptor is a good combo. Um, I like Centaur with Disruptor because you can escape, and it's good for getting vision on people and chasing people down. So I really like this Hobbit Hole draft. Geminate. That's the word I was looking for. Geminate. His Geminate attack is good for Tombstone. That's, I knew it all along. Oh, no. The arrow hit the Jakira. They going to do anything about it? They got Megas off of it. Got the life stealer. Again, another thing, like life stealer I put in the same category as Joker. I don't want to talk about his team fighting, so it's important team fight. They're gonna kill the defender in the background. The storm spirit's caught. Oh man, it's too much to watch. The Murano solo kills a storm in the background. Uh they kill Tombstone. Oh boy. Oh that was a sick ice path. Yeah, I think they're just too far ahead at this point. Storm goes in, gets hexed! Uh, oh, leave the Disruptor alone, Mr. Burrito. Disruptors don't deserve that. Another amazing series, a 1-1. This is rivaling the, uh, the, whatever this series was, Illegal Nameless. A 1-1, one, one, both games are really close. I, this game was, what's this, a, a 6k net worth lead until 45 minutes into the game. And then this game was pretty similar. It was, until the team fight I showed, a, a 2k net worth lead. So, uh, you know, both teams played really well. This also could be game of the week. I might do two, just because, again, it was just a wicked good series. So, well played by both teams. Okay, our sixth series, we got Full Effect Voyager versus the Mary Todd Lincoln Forever Yunts boys. So, FEV went with a Clinks, Pudge, Dawnbreaker, Rico, and Marana. Ricky Marana is just such a toxic support duo. You just sleep him with the dart, and then you five-second arrow, and you can pretty much kill anyone. MTL went with an Axe, Hoodwink, Drow, Dark Willow, and Disruptor. So... So Siegs is four position disruptor, mid hoodwink, which I knew Elrath El likes, a five position dark willow, carry drow. Okay, you're pretty squishy. I think that usually happens when you do like a mid hoodwink. You're only like big tanky boys, the axe. So you're, you're just glass cannons. If you guys can get the damage off first, you know, you do a bunch of damage. Full effect Voyager. I, this this combo here is just gross. I, I don't really love Clinks and Pudge, but you got a backline damage dealer. You got two tanks. Uh, I love the global presence with an invis hero, so maybe I'll go full like Voyager here, uh, just because I think you know the support deal is good. It's got good global. Maybe I would have done something other than a Pudge, but it gives you tank. Triple invis heroes, dude. There should never be a time this game where they don't have dust. <laughs> Clinks is like, I'll go in, guys, and the Pudge is like, no. Uh, can I do damage? Oh! The hook on the Willow. Oh boy. Is this Clinks gonna go down? Ricky's jumping in. Saves the Clinks. Now this Ricky's damage. Oh, good call, by you know there. Can I clump some? 
Send him back to the Shadow Realm Seeks. Oh, doesn't need it. Just don't want to do it. Oh boy. Got him now. Oh no. Oh, good pushwhack. Oh, they're chasing. They get more. Game number two, Mary Todd Lincoln on Radiant went with a Razor, Offlane Razor, Mid Invoker, a Vengeful Spirit 5, a Carry Weaver, and a Dazzle 4. I think this is a really, really well rounded draft. Maybe you miss a little bit on the tank now, again, um, but you got good save on Dazzle and Venge, and this Razor can get to tanky levels. Full Effect Voyager went with a Drow, a Pudge Mid again, an LC, a Hoodwink, and an Undying. I, yeah, I think this is pretty well rounded. You you don't really have any initiation other than a blink duel, which is like m my least favorite initiation of all the offlaners. You got the tank and the pudge and uh, good backline dealers. I guess Undyne is kind of a tank too. I I like the three melee two range as a combo uh, normally for drafts. I think it's pretty well rounded. I'll, I probably lean a little bit towards Mary Todd Link in this game, um, but I think this draft's solid too. Yeah, you don't really have any initiation on MPL, I should have thought of. This guy goes in super deep with a duel. They got the, the save with the Shallow Grave, and he ends up winning the duel on Weaver. But here comes the Pudge, holy smokes, what a hook. Ultra kill for the Pudge, really nice job there. They're all buying back though, they do a lot of damage, this Pudge might go down. Uh, ulti from the Weaver gets him out, the Razor doesn't chase, the Bush is low, but they do blow up the Drow, who is really deep on the tier 4s there, so not a bad defense so far. Uh-oh, there's the, the hook, probably the Rampage, maybe? Nope, the Undyne stole it. Freaking baller. Kill Tombstone. Oh, the Bushwhack hook on the Invoker, good save, barely misses the hook there, too. Well, this was a 2-0 for Full Effect Voyager. Uh, good to see them kind of come out and show up and, and uh, play against an MTL squad who I think are are pretty good. So, um, good series. It looked like game two. They held their advantage really well. The Pudge was doing a bunch of bunch of damage there. Highest net worth here on the game. Oh, does it show damage? Yeah, 17,000 damage. Game one was just super fighty. Look at all these team fights here. Uh, I mean, I think Full Effect Voyager just did a really good job this series. I think maybe you lacked a little bit of initiation on MTL. Otherwise, I think it was pretty solid. So, uh, yeah, good series. Okay, the seventh series, we're at Savage Sabres versus Team Ascent. Sa Sabres went with the Slark, Earthshaker, Centaur, Necrophos, and the Graphic CM. All right, I like that. Uh, pretty well run draft. Team Ascent went with the Train Protector, Dawnbreaker, Drow Ranger, Vengeful Spirit and Toad Hunter. So a mid Dawn Breaker. You got a good team fight. The problem I have with with these two is you got team fight but no damage. So you're gonna need the uh, the Dawn Breaker be shelling out damage and the or the the Drow Ranger. So a lot of control. You can kind of blow them up, but yeah, you're just kind of lacking damage with these two team fights. So again though, I mean you kind of lock them down for like ten seconds. If you can blow them up with Dawn Breaker who comes in, I think it takes like four seconds for her ulti to come in. Um, draw ranchers there on the back lines. I think you can blow people up. You don't really have any save on sabers, uh, so that's probably the weakness. But I think this is a really well rounded draft by the sabers here. Centro use it to get away. Are they gonna fight here? Our sick is TPing in. I mean, they are diving pretty deep. Oh, he trapped them. Their tower, this stupid creep would die. The tower could attack him. Oh boy. Nice stun by the Earthshaker again. Slark comes in on the back line. Oh, that's some nice permanent agi. Meanwhile, up top, he's going on the Necro post here. Necro's just so hard to kill, dude. Especially the early game, like, <laughs> grabs the bounder in their face. Has a hood. I mean, they're still going. Oh, that stun barely connected. He gets a kill there. He's gonna run out the Earthshaker now. Shovels right in front of them. Oh my gosh. We're gonna catch out the Earthshaker now. Oh, really a flashy team fight. <laughs> How are they going on the Centaur? The Slark's coming back. Just lane shenanigans, I guess. Dude, the minus armor you guys. Oh, they ravage. Get him. Well, again, they're fighting mid. Dude, what is this game? It's 
just it's just fight after fight people are dying respawning refighting game number two ascent went with a lich an axe a leshrac a marana and an ursa okay kind of a funky draft and funky in the sense that it's not like every other draft we've seen today you know there's no healy supports so uh i like it savers they went with a troll and enigma they did an aggressive lane here yeah they did an aggressive lane enigma undying windrunner and disruptor i think this is pretty solid maybe a little bit greedy on on savage savers here i love the disruptor pick though um i think you know team of sense pretty well rounded i'll probably go with their draft here but i think both these drafts are pretty solid this hero is just boring. Oh boy. They blow up that witch. I won't even fight here from right here. Oh, just kidding. Going sick call. Yeah. Oh, that black hole was nasty. A four minute black hole. But he just dies to the blush track. Uh, AoE damage anyway. So there's a. Uh, oh man, the blush track is just blowing people up. Can he live? No, the troll. Dang. Well, a 2-0 for Team Ascent. I'm really, really impressed with Team Ascent. I think Sabres have been playing really well this season, and Team Ascent kind of, like, found their niche the past couple of weeks. I think they've 2 0 like, two or three weeks in a row um, on games where I thought they would 1-1. One, one. So, really good job by Team Ascent. I think the series was pretty close. Even at minute 30, you know, one thing goes the other way, all of a sudden that net worth lead is dive into Dyer's direction, you know? So, Game 2 is really close. Game 1, I think Team Ascent did a good job of holding their lead. Um, and just kind of starving out the the Radiant. So overall, decent series. Already to the last series, we got PZR versus the Dingoes. Super excited for this series too. PZR went with a offlane Viper, a Willow, an Ursa, a Trinity Protector, and a mid Windrunner. So maybe you're a little bit squishy with the offlane Viper. Uh, but otherwise, you know, fairly well-rounded. You're definitely lacking initiation other than a Shackle or, or Ursa blinking in. Uh, Dingoes, they went with... Snapfire, Necrophos, Tekko, Death Prophet, and Dryanger. This is like the third Necrophos this week. I haven't really seen him until this week, so that's kind of crazy. Offlane here, and with a mid Death Prophet. I think those two are interchangeable. They went with their classic Tekko. I'm trying to think. I think maybe I, I lean Dingo's way here. Well, you're also lacking initiation here. I don't know how team fights are going to start for either team. Yeah, this is tough. I. I both these drafts are pretty close. Maybe maybe I'll lean PZR here. I think I changed my mind. I think I'm going to lean PZR a little bit. But I think this dra both these drafts are really, really close. Oh, boy. Oh, good old two by the tree. A three-man root there. Fights this foot. I end up killing him, though. Oh, snipe by the Windrunner there. This is not done. Triple kill by I did did. Game number two, the Dingoes, they went with an Undyne, a Toad Hunter, a Rico, a DP, and a Weaver. This is a carry Rico. Four position Weaver? Is that correct? No. No, it is not correct. He has a Daedalus. Five position Rico. That is just aggressive. Yeah, they're aggressive. I think the Weaver's the carry here. They, they just play aggressive. These are. They went with a offlane Magnus, a Snapfire, a Marana, Monkey Cane, and a Mid Night Stalker. So they they decided they wanted the Undying against the Magnus because the Monkey Cane kind of messes up the Tide Hunter in lane. Undying. The Tide Hunter versus the Magnus, not the Undying. This is the second aggressive dual lane we've seen where they swap i, I think i'm gonna lean dingoes here i think this is pretty well rounded you, you know you're still kind of missing uh your, your initiation is like a sleep dart or or blink ravage but i think it's fairly well rounded so i'll go dingoes game two why does it do that sometimes the, the auto dude this tombstone is so good oh man they can't kill it in time a good monkey king ulti though the night stalker is up there killing it they finally got it okay because Monkey King's still alive, the armor of his ulti really helping him out there. He finally goes down to the Death Prophet. Um, Death Prophet? Does he make it out? Good Mortimer's Kisses, almost killing him. Marana goes down, Sleeping Dart on the backline to the Snapfire. 
and they're gonna kill the uh, nice locker there. Yep, Snapfire dies, and then up here. Can you freaking? Dude, the camera. The assisted camera sometimes messes you up so hard. Well, I was really excited for this series too. Ended up being a 1-1 for Dingoes and PZR. These are like two of the teams I knew coming in, so I was super excited to see them play. It just, I think it kind of just showed how good these two teams are, right? Because game one was PZR favorite. You know, they did a really good job of, of pushing their advantage, holding out, starving them off, and then winning the game. And game two went the exact opposite way. It was very Dingo's favorite. You know, they did a good job of taking an advantage, holding it for the rest of the game. They, they, no one on Dingo's died the last 15 minutes of the game. Both these teams, I think, are really skilled, and it showed here. Um, because even, even, you know, as the Dingo's, if you lose game one, a, a game where they had a really big, or PZR had a really big lead, it was kind of hard to come back. You couldn't really do too much. You know, you only killed two heroes after the last 15 minutes of the game. To then turn it around and do the exact same thing to them, I think both these teams are really equally skilled. Really good series. Would have liked to see a game three. That wraps up this week. I went ahead and uh, changed all the rankings. The uh, record should be updated now for week four. I have all the, the teams listed here. It's mainly based off records. Jumping into predictions. I did fairly well last week. It was basically 50-50, counting the buy, because I always do to pump my numbers up. This next week, uh, we have some decent matchups here. So Full Effect Voyager versus Boneheads United. If you had asked me last week, I would have gave a 2 over Boneheads United. I think Full Effect Voyager played pretty well, so I'll probably say 1-1 one, one of the series. I haven't learned my lesson with 1-1s, one, so we'll see how that goes. I think this will be a pretty good series. PZR versus DTD, I think will be another good series, 1-1. One, one. Um, I think both these teams are, you know, top third of the league. Illegal versus Procedural Wide. Procedural Wide played against nameless and got 2-0 now playing against illegal i think nameless and illegal are the same so i lean a little bit towards illegal's way just because they've only lost to nameless who beat prestige worldwide 2-0 so i'll say that but we'll see how that goes genesis first decepticons super excited for this one i think this will be a 1-1 i this might be my uh my game of the week here team ascent first nameless this is going to be super excited i think this is a big test for team ascent you know they've been rising up playing really well i'm excited to see how they do against nameless who are tied as the best team in the league so uh i'll tentatively say 2-0 for nameless but i'm really excited to see what happens uh mtl versus buy i'll give an 0-1 to mtl there hopefully i'm right dingo versus gator oh my gosh this tail is all this time the dingoes versus the the gators Oh, I'll probably give the Dingo Boys a 2-0 here. I I don't think we'll have our offlaner this week. We'll probably need a stand-in, so I'll give you guys the edge. If I had my offlaner, I'm saying it's a 1-1. Oh, I can't wait to play the Dingo Boys. Hobbit Hole versus Savage Sabres. I'll give a 2-0 for the Savage Sabres, but I think I think Sabres are, are pretty good, and Hobbit Hole have found their niche, though, recently, so wouldn't be shocked if it was a 1-1. And then Golf Tuesday versus Five Guys 1 Cup. I kind of lean towards five guys. I think they've been playing really well and barely losing games. But I think Golf Tuesday is a pretty good team too. So I'll say 1-1 one, one for now. I uh, wouldn't be shocked if, if one of the teams pull out a 2-0 there. Uh, just because it'll be so close. Yeah, that's what I got this week. Genesis versus Decepticons. So excited for this game. I'll give them game of the week. I think that'll be probably the best game we have all week. So I'll give them the edge. That's all I got, guys. Uh, I don't think there's anything I needed to say this week. I think I'll wrap it up there. Good luck. Have fun, guys. Well, I'll uh, 